Uh, the the, the uh, Ontario Court of Appeal uh, decision in Kawaja was released this morning as part of uh, a number of decisions. There were five other cases. Uh, uh, Mr. Granger and I act for a moment Kawaja and uh, although I have not yet been in contact with Mr. Kawaja, we're waiting to hear from him uh, from the prison in Quebec where he is presently uh, uh, doing his time. The, unfortunately, the Court of Appeal uh, increased his sentence from uh, 10 years to life. Uh, we are extremely disappointed with that result. Uh, I expect that Mr. Kawaja will be as well. Uh, in addition to increasing Mr. Kawaja's sentence uh, to life, the Court of Appeal also increased two other sentences of other individuals uh, charged with terrorism and uh, denied an appeal in relation to uh, a life sentence uh, by the defense and as well upheld uh, extradition proceedings against two other individuals. So uh, overall, the same panel, that is the same three judges of the Court of Appeal, uh, increased sentences on all of the uh, terrorists uh, that uh, were convicted and denied appeals to lessen sentences in other cases. From a uh, conviction point of view, uh, Momen Kawaja was uh, convicted by the uh, trial judge of uh, possessing explosives uh, for uh, uh, criminal purposes, but he was specifically acquitted of terrorism charges in relation to those explosives. Specifically, he was acquitted of being involved in the London bomb plot. Uh, despite that, and despite recognizing that, the Ontario Court of Appeal has gone on to sentence him for count one uh, uh, in the indictment as if he had been convicted of terrorism, and certainly that is something that uh, will be the basis that uh, we recommend that the matter uh, uh, proceed to the Supreme Court of Canada by way of a, an application to leave. In terms of the conviction, the Court of Appeal disagreed with most of the trial judge's findings but upheld the conviction in any event, uh, I would say largely based on the uh, content of the communications, the, the hundreds and hundreds of emails that uh, Momen Kawaja sent uh, and that were tendered into evidence. So uh, as I say, uh, uh, we're disappointed. We will be uh, recommending uh, that Mr. Kawaja seek leave to appeal in the Supreme Court of Canada and uh, uh, that's uh, uh, where we're at at this point. The Crown, in our case, agreed with two for one. We put forward two for one, and Justice Rutherford, as you know, ultimately said, well, I'm not giving two for one, but I'm not going to tell you what I am giving. So we're left with a, uh, a sentence that we thought uh, the Court of Appeal would at least intervene and try and give that some clarity, and uh, they haven't bothered to do that. What they've done is increased it up to life. The big picture is you have uh, uh, the Court of Appeal uh, sentencing Momen Kawaja to life on the basis of uh, having committed terrorism in relation to the explosive devices when the trial judge specifically acquitted him of that offense. Uh, the big picture is that you have the Court of Appeal inviting us to take it up to the Supreme Court of Canada on the issue of the interplay between freedom of expression and, uh, and violence. You have uh, a constitutional issue uh, which has been reversed by this Court of Appeal. You have an armed conflict uh, clause which the trial judge said doesn't apply. The Court of Appeal says yes, it does apply. The trial judge got it wrong. It was up to the appellant or us to prove that uh, what he wanted to do, what Momin ultimately wanted to do, which was to go and fight and to assist the Mujahideen, to, uh, to prove, they say it was up to us to, to prove that that armed conflict is not in, con in keeping with the norms of international law. Uh, so putting the onus on the defense. So these are all uh, uh, important questions and uh, ones that uh, we feel should be looked at by the Supreme Court of Canada and we'll be making that recommendation to Momen Kawaja later today.